This conference will now be recorded. All right. Hello, everybody. This is Mike Lee. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. And I think our first agenda item is public comment. Is there any member of the public that would like to make a comment at this time? All right. Hearing none, we'll go to the next agenda item. So the first agenda item is the uh, consent agenda. Um, it's pretty light this month or this quarter. Um, so we just need to approve the meeting minutes um, from the last meeting in May. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the meeting minutes? This is Bino Chandy. I move that the minutes be accepted as presented. This is Matt, second. All right, easy enough. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstaining? All right. I think that's it for the consent agenda. So, I think next up on the agenda is Matthew. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, so Matthew's just going to give us an update on the CPACE financing for Mystic and the uh, um, addition of a 100 kW solar PV system um, to the financing package. So, go ahead, Matthew. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mackie Dykes. Um, <clears throat> As you'll recall, just a few short weeks ago uh, in the board full board meeting, uh, we approved or reapproved financing for the Mystic Aquarium um, for a CPACE project there, uh, which includes solar, um, uh, VFDs, um, lighting, and building, uh, building management system. Um, the total was 1.26 million. Shortly after that meeting, the aquarium came back to me. Um, they'd like to add another solar PV system, another 100 kilowatt system uh, to the scope of the financing, um, which would increase the amount from uh, that 1.6 million that was approved to 1.46 million. Um, so we needed to come back uh, to you for, uh, for approval. Um, I, I think both from our clean energy deployment perspective as well as a financial perspective this makes sense uh you know obviously we're getting more solar uh that's positive um but because of the the uh sort of the cash flow benefits that come you know the the energy savings uh and the recs from the project will exceed the uh the additional uh repayment amount that the aquariums take out it actually improves the the sir of the project with their dscr so you know, i think it all aspects this is a, a positive thing uh and so we've uh, wanted to bring it forward for approval thanks matthew um do you have any comments matthew about sort of like the rest of the aquarium sort of like financial situation and you know are we all comfortable with the rest of the, um their financial situation yeah we um <clears throat> the state had them uh, you know, uh as part of the $7 million uh, financing package that the state put together. Uh, the the aquarium put together a full sort of uh, financial package as well as uh, um, a projection uh, to the end of 2022. Uh, we actually had them uh, sort of expand upon that package um, uh, to go out further. Um, and we did some stress testing uh, on, uh, you know, if they did not meet all the attendance uh, uh, projections that they'd made, as well as uh, uh, not getting some of the increased revenue from new sort of, uh, not business lines exactly, but yeah, there was some sort of new areas of revenue they were counting on. We sort of discounted all that to make sure that uh, they were still able to, to repay. And, uh, and they they still passed. So the, yeah, the, the financial team was comfortable even under those stress scenarios, which again exceeded the underwriting that the state did for for their financing. 
So there was uh, some discussion, and I forget which meeting, I don't know if it was a board meeting or a different committee meeting about sort of like entering into some type of like outreach or marketing partnership with the Green Bank. Is there something on that? Yep. Uh, I That was one of the conditions of the board approval of the uh, concessionary interest rate. Um, I, I've, I've talked with the CEO of the aquarium about that. Uh, he's on board with it and thinks it's a great idea. Uh, our marketing team has drafted that uh, that plan, uh, and our, we're going to to meet with the aquarium to to go through it. Um, and uh, you know, assuming that they're comfortable with it, uh, it'll be part of the financing agreement that we sign with them for this. I think it's going to be great. You know, we're we're talking about. Uh, you know, clean energy days at the aquarium, uh, joint marketing across all channels for the program um, and the, the project, uh, you know, collaborating on video case studies. So I, you know, we really want to make a, a big bang with this. Excellent. Anybody else have questions for Mackie? No, would you like a motion? That would be great. Yep, let's I'll entertain a motion. Okay. Uh I'll uh I'll move resolution number two to approve the uh changes to the Mystic Aquarium project. This has been a shandy second. All right, thank you. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right, resolution two has passed. Great, thank you all. All right, up next is Sergio, who's just gonna give us an update on some of the incentive program. <coughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. This is Sergio Carrillo. Um, I'm gonna give you an update on, on the RCP extension program, or RCPE. And the RECs that will be generated during RCPE, which we have called RECs or RECs. So by way of background, uh, back, on, back on September 23rd, the board approved an RCP extension for an additional 32 megawatts of approved projects or RCPE. Broken down like this, 10 megawatts of RCP approvals beyond 350 megawatts to account for cancellations, which have been historically between 15 and 20%. So the idea with these 10 megawatts is to backfill our SIP and uh, meet the public policy target of 350 megawatts of deployed projects. Then an additional 22 megawatts of approvals beyond 360 megawatts in order to stabilize the local solar industry from, from the impact of COVID-19. On October 15, Pura issued a motion ruling in support of the Green Bank um, to continue aggregation of residential end use customers and associated RECs. Um, so today I'm giving uh, some updates on the cost recovery plan including progress made towards executing a contract with a load serving entity or LSE for the sale of all RECIs and as well as other um, Green Bank non-SHREC RECs. Next slide, please. Um, on the cost recovery alternatives we considered, um, our pre preference would have been a long-term transaction, a, a Shrek-like transaction where we enter a 15-year um, contract with the utilities to, uh, to purchase the RECs. Uh, we, we met, we approached the utilities, Eversource and UI, and neither one showed interest in a long-term transaction. Um, the reason being that when they procure energy, to serve their standard offer load, uh, the regs are included in the procurement process. So both EDCs have enough regs to serve their RPS targets, to serve the load while meeting their RPS targets. What they suggested was that we reach out to creditworthy 
um, counterparties for a short-term transaction. And that's basically what we did. That's option two. So uh, we reached out to three of the most reputable and financially stable load serving entities in the U.S. Um, and those are um, NG, Direct Energy and Constellation. And uh, we received two quotes from the three um, um, uh, LSEs. You can see those quotes there or that indicative pricing for REX to be generated in 2022, 2023, and 2024. Um, the pricing is, um, it could be on a fixed basis or unit contingent basis. And what that means on a fixed price, uh, on a fixed basis means that the seller meaning the green bank would be required to deliver a specified an agreed upon number of wrecks um right and failure to do so will result in penalties to the seller uh, the unit contingent basis means that the buyer agrees to purchase however many wrecks are created by the generation um and there are no volume guarantees. There are no penalties to the seller. Um, and uh, because of that, because it's less risky to the seller, uh, usually there is a discount on a unit contingent basis, right? You could see in the LSE number one quote is a dollar lower than the fixed price. And however, the LSE two, said listen i'm very interested in those regs in connecticut regs we would like to uh, uh, have a long-term uh, working relationship with you guys uh, i'm going to purchase those regs either fixed or unit contingent at no discount which is it really increases the value of the quote for us um it is important to mention that we estimated that we would need an average of $20 per rec over 15 years to cost recover the RCPE incentives. And as you can see, the prices that we were offered for the first three years, 2022 through 24, are much higher than our target. Um, next slide, please. Is there, is there any questions? I'm sorry about that, the previous slide. All right, uh, next slide, please. Um, so the next question in the process was um, to determine how many wrecks we would be able to sell. Um, so from RCPE, we expect to generate around 40,000 wreckies. But we also expect to generate around 36,000 non-Shrek wrecks. And non-Shrek wrecks, um, are generated by RCIP systems approved um, prior to January 1st, 2015. I'm sorry. Or RECs generated by projects in the legacy uh, on site distributed generation program. So, in total, we expect to have at least 76,000 RECs available for trade. Um, next slide, please. Um, on the deal structure, as I, as I explained, it could be on a firm basis or on a unit contingent basis. Um, and uh, we initially thought of selling some regs on a fixed basis to lock in the higher price, right? And some regs on a unit contingent basis. However, as conversations progressed, with the LSEs, we realized that we could de-risk the deal entirely by selling everything on a unit contingent basis without losing value, which is the, the green box that you see there. So we went from a hybrid fixed and unit contingent to a 100% unit contingent uh, deal. And this is what we try to, we try to execute. 
Um, any questions about that? What, this is Mike. What are the remaining recs? Oh well, yes. If we if we uh, expect to produce seventy six thousand recs, and we offer the set the the buyer seventy thousand, we would be left with six thousand recs, right? Um, we've been debating about that. Do we want to keep that cushion for you know the delivery years? And uh, there's really no need to do that. So we could we could offer the entire seventy six thousand units um, on a unit contingent basis. Again, no volume guarantees uh, from the green bank. No penalties if we under deliver. So there's no reason to to hold on to those six thousand regs. Sergio, Break with the with the buyer be obligated to buy what we offer under the unit contingency basis or would they also have the option to buy or not buy yes they will be obligated to buy up to a maximum number that will be in the in the contract right so that's that's some of the volumetric risk if we offer them 70,000 regs and we end up producing generating 80,000 because we completed and energized the projects faster, because we received Pura uh, REC certification faster, because we minted the RECs with Nepal faster. So let's say we produce 80,000 RECs, they would only be able to purchase 70 because it's in the contract, it's always capped. And the idea would be to have to include probably a, a higher number just to have that wiggle room if we produce, if we end up producing more wrecks. It's a great question too. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So this is Benno, who buys the remaining wrecks then? Well, those remaining regs would have to be sold. I mean, we could enter into an agreement with the LSEs as well, or you would likely sell on the spot market at the then current prices. And that's some of the volumetric and price risk that we are taking by holding on to those regs. Um, again, I don't think there's any reason to hold on to those regs, uh, given that uh, the uh, ACP alternative compliance payment is forty dollars. It's expected to go down, so we don't. I don't expect uh, Rex prices to be higher than these numbers that we're being offered right now. Okay, thanks. Plus, uh, yeah, that was a good question. Actually, the the other risk is that. When we try to sell those 6,000 regs on the spot market, the risk is that the market is not there. It's not interested in those regs because it's been, you know, oversupplied, right? That happens, and we end up selling at a very, very low price or, or not selling regs at all. But under the, under the fixed price model, we'd have that risk anyway. Because we'd have totally. to hedge. We'd have to hedge totally. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. On the, the fixed price, the thing is that you you um you're obligated to deliver a certain number of wrecks, right? And if you don't meet that number, then you start paying penalties. Right. So we'd have to assume a conservative number, which would leave Correct. us potential uh, surplus, which would be subject to the spot market. Absolutely, yes. Whereas on the other model, we can have an aggressive number and limit that, or we could keep a conservative number and use the pool for a hedge against higher spot market prices or in favor of higher spot market prices. Yes, um, uh, it's very true. Um, again, waiting, waiting. Um, 
until these regs are until their maturity date it's it's also risky right you 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 risk that there's no market to purchase those regs so my thought was hey we will put everything on a unit contingent basis and uh, lock in those prices that are incredibly attractive all right so uh to wrap up this update um so we wanted to talk about the the, the our decision to pursue the lse number two as you can see the values and what you, you're seeing here is a hundred percent unit contingent uh deal right um the financial value of both quotes are very similar very very similar uh but counter counterparty credit worthiness was a key variable in our decision other factors that were considered um in our decision were price uncertainty volumetric risks and supply risks um additional consideration also additional consideration was given to to how each of these options align with the green bank rec asset management guidelines in terms of uh, limit limiting transaction costs locking in attractive prices limiting downside exposure retaining upside opportunity and providing revenue certainty so all things considered um, we decided to pursue a hundred percent unit contingent transaction with LSE number two. Um, we're currently engaged in contract discussions. Um, we're reviewing contract language um, and expect to complete a transaction within 10 days. Any questions? Is the credit worthiness of the two parties about equal or? Um, no, um, I, I don't, I don't think so. One is, um, um, one is the largest, um, load serving entity in the U S by far with the largest, uh, nuclear generation fleet in the U S, um, financially, uh, stable investment grade which is way stronger financially stronger than lse1 which has gone through a series of uh, acquisitions and there's actually right now going through another acquisition it's less stable very large as well but it's not the same so um from a credit worthiness perspective without a doubt lse number two it's a better choice. Got it. Makes sense. Better price and better credit worthiness. Yes. Sergio, it's Matt. Just uh, for information, uh, it sounds like you guys just identified these load serving entities. You know, I have no idea how many there are, but is, you know, do you think there's any out there that? maybe not for this round but future rounds that uh you know are there other are there other players in that market uh, yes there are um there might be um dozens of lses in every state right and every deregulated market there, there are dozens and dozens of lses usually mom and pop shops they're very small uh and the large ones are probably there's a handful of very very large lses including energy um direct energy constellation energy there might be you know five six of them i i guess my question maybe i don't know brian farnan if you're on still I just want to make sure we is this the type of thing we need to slash should have run an RFP on for auditing purposes at the you know are we going to 
Have you guys thought about that? I'm not, I mean, it sounds like a great deal. I just know uh, sometimes we enter into contracts or not sometimes, it has happened. And the auditors ask, you know, whether we followed the procedures. Maybe that's just homework. If someone could just make sure that there's nothing, you know, we should have done in terms of an Yes. Article. Yes, part of um, our due diligence will be to reach out to brokers so that at the end of the day, we have four quotes at least. Okay. Just for this, for the same reason you just asked. Great. Yeah. And, and yes, we are in continuous conversations with brokers, with two brokers. Uh, their prices, I just compared their prices, they're very similar. Uh, uh, the, the only issue is that they don't go that far out as 2023 and 2024. So they offer to, to buy your 2022 regs, but you cannot hedge the 2023 and 2024 regs. So, um, and at the same prices for 2022. So there's not really a, a, a benefit, you know, a financial benefit in 2022 with going with the brokers. But yes, we will get those quotes as well as part of our due diligence. Is there any other questions? All right. Thank you all. all right. um, that's the end of our agenda. Um, anything else anybody wants to raise before I entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting? All right. Will somebody offer a motion to adjourn the meeting? Smat, so moved. I'll second. Um, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody.